Hey everyone, Matt Pisarsik from RazorEmporium.com here today to do the best beginner double-edged safety razor showdown. We are gonna take some of the most popular recommended safety razors and give them a trial comparing each one against each other in one epic shave. Let's get started. So we're all lathered up, we're loaded up in each razor with a Paul Silver blade. We used our standard go-to Parasso White Anti-Irritation Shaving Cream and our standard Omega Boards Hair Brush. And we are gonna give each of these razors kind of a quick audition comparing them. Let's get started. So, first up is the Wishi. Um, also known as the Micro Touch one, it's sold as you know the Vanderhagen. A lot of different brands use this, and it is so mild, it feels like it took nothing off. Yeah, it's do. I mean, you can hear that stubble in the microphone. It is doing practically nothing. Um, I've used this in the past, and that's exactly my my. my uh, experience in the past is that it is so mild that you're going to end up going over the same area over and over which is kind of defeating the purpose of the double-edged razor itself so we're gonna say forget that one um, let's move on to the Parker this is the 91 R ah much better now we're taking down some stubble so the Parkers are made in India a lot of the kind of source razors that, in my opinion, they're kind of come from are Gillette's, Edwin Jaggers. They have very similar heads. They're made out of brass for the handles, uh, cast zinc, uh, chrome plated heads. Definitely a lot better than that Micro Touch one. It is taking down stubble with ease. It is smooth, comfortable. I do like the longer handle on it. I think that as you're getting started, um, that's a really great feature if you're coming from cartridge razors. It's kind of easier. Don't forget, you need to grip it more like a pencil, not a paintbrush, but still having some extra weight, a little extra length can help with your grip. And even though they're made in India, don't let that deter you as some kind of slam on quality. They're actually made very, very well. The machining is beautiful, the casting's beautiful, the plating's beautiful. I think for uh, the, the price point, they're an awesome value. That's why we recommend them for beginners. And I'm really liking the quality of that shave so far. Very nice. Moving along to one of the most popular razors out there, Edwin Jagger DE89. Uh, this is the barley handle one. And you can see the similarities in the, in the razor heads. Very, very similar. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing that the feel is going to be very, very comparable. Yeah. Um, Edwin Jaggers are similar construction. They have a brass uh, handle, uh, zinc uh, cast and chrome plated heads. They are made in Sheffield, England. Wow. I've always liked the, the Edwin Jaggers. This is cutting a little bit closer, I would say, than the Parker, just by a slight amount. Um, but it's actually really nice. I find it to be a little more efficient. Um, I'm a big fan of Edwin Jagger. I think they are one of the top companies in the wet shaving world uh, from their soaps and creams to their brushes, their accessories, and of course their razor handles. I think they offer a great amount of products and a really big fan of these, so that felt great. Uh, the price point of the Parkers, I know we didn't cover that, is, you know, these would be in the 20 to $30 range, just depends on the model. Uh, Edwin Jaggers are gonna be more in the 40 to $50 range. Uh, and last but not least, we are gonna use a Gillette Super Speed. This is a 1940s style.
Hmm, very nice. I would compare it closer to the Edwin Jagger. I would say it is um, very similar to Edwin Jagger. It doesn't have as much weight, um, but it is a butterfly design, so loading blades is really quick and easy, which is why they called it super speed, the speed of loading the blades, as compared to um, the Edwin Jagger and the Parker that are three-piece designs, so you're gonna take them apart like this, sandwich the blade in. Uh, the safest way to always load a three-piece is like that, with the head flat on the palm of your hand. That way you don't have to worry about deli slicing your hand open. The Gillette Super Speed is made out of solid brass. Um, there's no zinc, there's no chrome plating. They all are uh, stamped or turned parts, meaning that they were never cast. Think of cast pieces like ice that you pour in a liquid into a, into a mold, it takes shape. But just like ice, cast parts can be fragile, meaning that if they're dropped, they can shatter. Whereas the Gillette's, being brass and being stamped out of solid metal, um, uh, more like a hamburger press, I guess if we're using food analogies here, like ice. So it's it was always solid metal. These pieces make for uh, great longevity. If they get deformed, if they if they're dropped and they're you know deformed, they can actually be usually bent or sanded or polished back into shape. Which is what we do a lot uh, here at Razor Emporium is a lot of the uh, refurbishing. Like this was refurbished in a factory kind of nickel finish. Super speeds can be had in the wild for you know between five and maybe you know twenty five thirty five dollars. If they're redone, obviously they can be more. maybe in the $75 to $90 kind of price point. But again, you are getting a razor that is already, these are these were made from the 40s up through the 80s. Uh, the handle changed over time, but the head was pretty much always the same. We get that question a lot of what, what Gillette should I get started with? If I want to just pick one razor, Beginner razor, and that's the super speed. We have a great video kind of going through more details of the weights and histories and all you know all the details on these same razors. Check it out in the uh, description. I'm going back to Edwin Jagger. Uh, truth be told, I have an Edwin Jagger in my bathroom at home, so I'm very familiar with the way it shaves. Very nice. Now let's go back one more time with the Parker. Finish up. You know what, for the neck area, I gotta say the Parker is actually really nice. And that's not an uncommon thing. I mean, hence the reason for adjustable razors. Um, when you have, you know, something like your cheeks usually are a lot more coarse, a lot more um, uh, durable or uh, able to kind of take, you know, the razor, uh, you know, abuse more or less. Um, but your neck sometimes is the most sensitive area on your face, so it doesn't surprise me that a little bit more of a mild blade exposure is actually feeling really nice on the neck. One thing you may have to do as you're using a double-edged blade is kind of clear it from your stubble. And so with a three-piece, if you just kind of loosen it and hold it under running water, it's a great way to kind of get some stubble and shaving cream out, and then you can just go ahead and tighten it down again. So I recommend doing that throughout your shave. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. So, how do they compare? Um, all three delivered great quality shave. Obviously, you know, my face feels great after after using all three. 
I would say in terms of, you know, the best bang for your buck, the Parker did really well if you're getting started and you have kind of on a budget or maybe don't want to invest a lot of money. I think the Parker was great. Edwin Jagger had similar, maybe a little bit more close performance than the uh, Parker. Um, it has a little bit more of a fine kind of uh, exquisite look to it. I think it's more handsome in some ways. Um, the Both of them though, being zinc, if you are someone who shaves in the shower um, and if they, you know, you know, or slippery hands around a sink, if they drop, you could deal with uh, possibly something breaking, the, the threads coming off or shattering. Um, so they do have that potential of, of getting damaged if they're dropped or abused. The Gillette would obviously not have that same problem just because the way it's made. Uh, if, this, if this did get dropped, it'd be something that could be easily kind of readjusted, almost like a pair of glasses. And we do that a lot at Razor and Pouring with like a little pair of jeweler's pliers. We can readjust things, repolish, replate things, and get them back in a working order. So if you're someone who loves vintage and wants to use something that maybe your grandfather used or want to be able to pass it down to your grandkids, I think the Gillette would be the most durable of these razors. Uh, and also very, very good performing. I had a you know, fun time using it. And uh, I think loading the blades is also really easy. Every time I you know, talk to someone about double-edged razors, they always say, oh, those razors, you twist the bottom and the silo doors open up. And that's usually the super speed they're thinking of. Um, all three are, are, are great for shaving performance and uh, had a real fun time kind of doing a showdown on all three of these. We hoped the video today was helpful and maybe can help you make a decision as you're getting started with what razor to start with. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We rely on you, the viewer, to tell us what you want to see next and how you felt this video helped out. Thanks so much, guys, for watching, and we'll see you next time.